In this video, we will learn organic chemistry. The chemistry of different materials are present everywhere. From the clothes that you wear, the tires that are attached on your car, from the headset that you are probably using right now as you watch me, and most especially to the food that we eat, that we digest and process in our body. These materials are made from different combinations and arrangements of several different elements. But of all the 118 elements that we know so far, there is one special element in the heart of chemistry. This element is so special that chemists gave a special branch just to study it. And this branch of chemistry is what we call organic chemistry. But when did organic chemistry started, we need to go back in the mid-1800s. During that time, people know that plants or some plants have medicinal purposes or uses, but they don't know why. What are in those plants that make them useful to cure some illnesses? So they began to experiment and extract what are in those plants. They found out that plants are composed of several substances or molecules and these molecules have one commonality. Molecules that are found in organic substances, meaning to say living things like plants, are linked together by carbon the element carbon in the molecules that you can see there on top those three molecules are examples of molecules that are linked by the element carbon the element carbon is represented by the black particles that are found in those three molecules these molecules that are found from living things are called organic compounds Organic compounds are substances that are derived from living things, plants, animals. So they believe that organic compounds can only be extracted or produced from living things. This idea was changed when an unexpected event occurred. Organic substances like plants we also have organic molecules in our body. Basically, we are actually made from organic materials and we produce organic substance also. One organic substance that we excrete is urine. Urine is made from an organic compound known as urea. Now, during the late 1800s, Frederick Verler accidentally discovered something. Frederick Verler was trying to mix ammonium chloride and silver cyanate. But after combining these two compounds, he produced an unexpected product. Verler produced urea and it was a surprise. Why? Because urea is an organic substance and, and it can only be produced by a living thing. But Verler produced it inside his laboratory. And that gave rise to what we call the modern organic chemistry. This chemistry defines organic compounds as carbon-based substances derived from either living things or man-made processes. It is not a surprise that 98% of all the known 
molecules or substances that we know as of today are mostly organic compounds. The heart of organic compounds is the element carbon. Now what makes carbon so special? Carbon is said to be a tetravalent atom, meaning to say it is an atom or element that has four valence electrons. One, two, three, and four. Now this property of carbon makes it possible for it to catenate, which means it can bond, it can link to itself to form multiple bonds. It can bond to itself, say for example, two carbons linked together to form ethane or by linking four carbon atoms to form butane. It can sometimes also form cyclic structure like benzene and even complicated molecules such as branch hydrocarbons. The combination of carbon atoms is limitless and that is why organic chemistry is so important in our daily lives because with this branch of chemistry we can produce a lot of substances depending on what we need. It was a short discussion, I know, but it was just meant to give you an idea of what organic chemistry is all about. I hope I was able to give you an idea of what this branch of science is and made you realize that our discovery of molecules forming new substances is not yet finished. See you again in our next video. God bless. Tell me that you love me